rocking on the ones and twos. What? Gonna come pop lock with me? Hmm? Oh, you're gonna come pop lock with me? There he is. Hi, big guy. Oh, uh, he's a delightful feller. He is my co-host. May not say a whole lot, but he's, uh, he's the brains of this operation. He sure is. Uh, welcome to episode 140, everyone, and we've made it this far already. We're on our way to a third year. I can't believe we just, we, we've made it this far. I don't know. It's been a, it's been a real journey. I'm very grateful for all my guests and everyone that's made this show what it is. So thank you to everyone, and uh, we're going to just get right into it. Thank you, Pepels, Peepels. <laughs> Alright guys, we are here again. Uh, I have not done one of these in a while. Just It may not seem like it to you because they come out once a week, but uh, I don't know, I've taken on just a small break and now I'm kind of getting back into it again just to uh, get out there and meet more people. I just kind of focused on you know me and my whole world and just going to the gym and working on myself mentally and physically, so uh, yay me. Um, but also, I, I met this, our next guest, she... I posted something on Facebook and she was in one of the groups and was just looking for a few more guests and she wanted to be on and uh, I don't know a whole lot about her other than some of the videos I've seen just a little bit of the little conversations we've had over the last week or two here. Um, but she seems like a very delightful person and you know has a story uh, and she seems to advocate on her own end and we need more of that of course. Uh, so you want to introduce yourself and maybe tell just a little bit about yourself? Well, hi, I'm Mariah Burley. Um, well, I found out when I was a bit old, very young, that I have a cognitive disability, which is not very, which is a very broad term. Um, I don't really know what it is. We suspect it's autistic, being autistic could be ADHD too. I know for a fact that I am dyslexic as well, so that would be a triple, you know, three different disabilities in one person. Um, I also have issues with depression, anxiety, a lot of different things. Um, I try my best to advocate for all of everyone in the disabled community um, because I know that it's better to fight together than just to fight by yourself. Um, I try my best to um, stand up for anyone that I feel like is being mistreated in the disabled community, even if they may not feel like I do, but I do. Yeah, uh, and I think it's easy to do that when you were that person. Like you, you, you were the person that was, you know, mistreated and misunderstood. And you don't want to be the person who, I don't know. Let's say they sat at the lunch table by themselves and no one wanted to speak to them, or people bullied you or said horrible things about you. You don't want to be that person. And it's easier to fight for it when you have experienced it your your own self. Very true, very true. Honestly, um, I didn't know that. Honestly, I don't remember um, knowing that I was that I had something that was different about me until I was about eight. Because, and the reason I know this is because um, when I was eight, I was um, I was reading the Bible, which hey, this is going to be a really hard story to tell because it was you know that. Um, so I was. Eight reading the Bible. My grandmother, she is not passed on, but she is from Jamaica and know and there's words in the Bible that are very hard to pronounce. And as an eight year old, not really understanding, hey, you're different because I didn't know that. Um, I couldn't pronounce some of the words. Um, and she thought it to last. Um, and it showed me that I don't read really like everyone else. And I know that. That may should not be traumatizing to somebody, but it showed me, oh, hi, you're different. Um, and since then, I found out, you know, I found out I did have this way. I didn't, I was aware of it, but it wasn't like, oh, it was, I'd kind of lived my life, you know, before eight and knowing that I was different, but it was okay, you know. But then there was a fear behind, you know, it became a fear a little bit because, oh, yeah, so every time you read out loud, someone's going to possibly laugh. So it, kind of traumatized me to the point where I, it was terrifying anytime you get cold on to read out loud because my dis um my learned disability was being dyslexic, you know, you have issues with reading and writing, you know. 
so that in itself, plus pronunciation issues, which I do have, makes, makes it hard for me to sometimes, like, oh, you're going to mess up. So I got to always tell people, oh, I may read differently, but please give me the chance, you know. Um, even my sister, like, worries sometimes, like, about me. Because I guess she knows I'm going to be fearful when I'm doing it. Yeah. Well, and people are so judgmental from the outside. that Whatever they don't understand, they immediately just kind of write it off. And I think when it comes to us as disabilities, I think people are so afraid and, and, and they don't want to acknowledge that they can, like, they don't want to be us so bad. Like, they're afraid of what we are, even though we're we're used to it. It it scares them that like this is what reality can be for someone else and and you know in some cases like you know some of the, some of the things you are you're born with but um, some people you know are become disabled just because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time you know whether a car accident or something um, or something they get diagnosed down the road um, but it, it's I think yeah I think we're very terrifying to people to understand I think it's the same thing how I look at the homeless population. Um, even people who deal with addiction issues, it's, it's, I think we all try to imagine that we're so separated and so far gone from that, that that could never happen to us, but it's really not the truth. And, um, and, in, and like in your case, as, as a person with a disability, every one of us, now you have, you have something that impacts your reading ability, but we all as a disability or a person with a disability, we tend to get looked at like we're stupid even if we're not. Yeah. So in my case, yeah. So in my case, use me as an example, I get looked at as stupid because I'll look close at my phone. Cause it's like, why would somebody look so close to their phone? They must be stupid. And obviously it's not true, but you actually have, a, I mean, again, we all have legitimate reasons why we are, or aren't dumb. Um, but like in your case, it, it impacts your reading. So it may sound like you're dumber than you are, but you're obviously not. It's just, it's, it's, <laughs> It, it takes you a little to get to where you got to get to. Like for me, sometimes it may take me a little slower to read something because I'm reading it line by line. And when it goes to the next line, I have to take my device and go to the next line. So it slows my reading down. It doesn't mean my reading level is any le- lesser than the person next to me. Um, but unless someone understands that you need a little extra time, uh, you know, yeah, they're going to look at you sideways and think that you're just off. But it, it, it's just... You know, and, and again, even as a person, I mean, I've, I've seen your videos where you, you're talking about your depression and things. And, you know, it, it. I'm sure it took you a while to even adjust and to understand that you're clearly not dumb. It's just something you have to get used to. Yeah, that's true. Um, like, to be honest, throughout the years, a funny thing is when I started my YouTube, um, I was terrified because, you know, I already have a disability that's going to showcase itself. That's not the problem and the issue. The issue was when... It, when I started writing my notes out and everything and reading them on screen, that was terrifying because, you know, it highlights the parts that, highlights an area that was trauma for me. And now it's becoming, you know, the forefront of everything, you know? Yeah, for sure. So, um, like, for me, I mean, even though I have, like, tra- that tra- those traumas throughout my life, like being bullied because you're different or, you know, and stuff, like, um, even though those things were traumas, I try my best to make them people know the honest truth about it because I don't want people to feel like, like, um, even, like you know, that it took me down. It didn't take me down. It may have harmed me in a way, yeah, but um, it means I will fight harder for anyone that I feel like is in a situation like that. I, like, people, like, for example, if I feel like someone's being bullied and people don't, I know some people don't like when I do this, but and I feel like someone's being bullied in front of me, I will just go in front of, I will step, like, in between that person and <laughs> the other person. I feel like it's the person that's being attacked, and I will stand up for that person, even if they didn't want me to do it, which I feel bad for making them feel like that, but I don't want anyone to be hurt, and I don't like seeing it. Like, I remember when I was in high school, um, this girl, um, this girl, her name was Cece, and she had crutches because she was, had cerebral palsy. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why I remember this. Maybe because it was impactful. Um, someone tried to trip her, and I got so mad. I got so mad. I said, how dare you try to do that to her? I don't, because I don't understand. Like, she's a human being. She's not, like, less than. And that's one thing I think a lot of people 
outside of the disability community view a lot of people in the disability community as we're less than um like human and that's not even true we just may seem that di- we seem different to you because you don't understand us but as any we're less than a human you know yeah i mean i would i would again maybe i'm biased because i am one but i would say the strongest people that i that i've ever come in contact with the strongest people are people with disabilities because you have to you know we talk about mental health, but mental health is an included package that comes with it. So you essentially almost get a second disability with your disability. And that's if you only, I agree. That's if you only have one. If you have, there's people who have three different disabilities or whatever. Um, yeah. And yeah, it, it takes so much strength. And that's like for you, like you're representing health. For you, you're representing three communities. You're, you're black, you're a woman, and you have a disability. <laughs> so you're representing three communities. And so like your inner strength is something that, you have to find a way to dig out because the world is going to look at you certain ways, no matter how you want it. I know, or not. but you have a, you have the choice to kind of define where your destiny goes and, and how people see you. Now, some people are going to hate and people are going to see you however they see fit. But I think the overall, you know, population could see you a certain way if you show that strength. So by you going on the internet and doing these videos and talking about mental health and coming on these podcasts and things, by you doing that, it, it shows how strong you are. So again, no matter what you do, people are going to look at you one way, however, because there are people just, they don't, you know, I always say for me, the blind people in the world are not the people who have the lesser sight. It's the people who refuse to see what's right in front of them. Um, and so I think That's we, so true. I think the people with disabilities, we have like a sixth sense where we tend to pick up on things that people don't see. Um, we, we, we can, we can have empathy. We can feel. And, and again, there's some of us that are bad people. Don't get me wrong. I'm not acting like all people with disabilities <laughs> are just lovely angels. We're not, but there's a lot of us who are able to use what some of us call our superpower to really help and inspire others. And, and not just people with disabilities others as well because our people go to work and hate their lives or are struggling in in some way financially or some sort and then they see someone like us who's in a wheelchair or some whatever someone who's struggling at some point in their life I mean, maybe they're blind and they, they have a dog and they're just getting from point a to point b they're going to work and they're doing and they're impacting their community in one way and they felt and then they just go wow like i feel stupid for complaining even if they had legitimate reasons to complain they may feel stupid because it's like, oh, like I have all the, I have these problems, but it's not what that person over there has. And so the more you speak up and the more you do what you're doing, you're helping somebody, even if it's somebody who doesn't have a disability. Maybe, maybe it's a black woman who's dealing with whatever they're dealing with, but it's somewhat similar and, and you're impacting them by just being a strong black woman. That's true. Um, it's just interesting. Like throughout my life, I'm like, I look back on things and I'm like, how did I get to this point? But then I realized how, like, um, honestly, I didn't, I remember back in elementary school, which is how I got into, I think that's where my passion for the, um, definitely, I mean, I know that I have a disability. I know that, you know, but I realized I worked with a little girl when I was about eight and I didn't realize back then I didn't really know much about, um, kids that were autistic and this is a little girl she was non-verbal and the reason I think the impact was there was a good impact there was because you know being I wasn't as um when I was in elementary school me and a group of guys were in this um we were pulled out for reading you know back then that was a bad experience because I was like we were singled out but my mom was like I don't know I, I don't understand what you thought that way but she understands now why I do um I used to view it as a bad experience because they would have everybody, you know, throughout the classes, come out into the hallway, and then they would pull the kids that, you know, right at the grade level, which was, I think I was the only girl in the group. That's what, that's what, that's what the point, though. But, <laughs> so we would be pulled for reading because we read on the grade level, and which is good because we got help. I appreciate that. But if I wasn't, now I think about it. I wouldn't have been able to reach a little girl that was autistic. I remember her name. I don't know why. Her name was Jessica. She was nonverbal. She was autistic. I didn't know that at the point, but I do now. Um, and I got to reach her. And to me, that was impactful because 
you know, being a kid that had reading difficulties or challenges with reading, it felt good to be able to read. And even though I don't know if she was absorbing what I was reading, it felt good to be able to help somebody that was similar to me, even though at the same time I didn't know how different I was. So I just assumed this is just how Mariah is, you know, because I've always been this way. And I don't really know how to be any other way, you know? So to me, that experience was, it showed me how much, um, how strong I fight for people that are in the disability community. And I felt bad because I never would have known this class was here, like special ed class, I guess it was called. I don't remember if it was called that or something else. But um, I wouldn't have known they even existed because I never saw them in the the hallways. I never, they were always excluded. So I didn't even know they were even there. And if I wasn't taken out for reading to get help for reading I would have never even met that little girl which makes me really sad to say um but the truth but see like I, I, again I'm, I'm just kind of projecting myself and, and presuming I guess but like you found this person who in a way you're looking at her as a person who cannot speak she physically can't project her vocals and mm-hmm. you're taking what you're doing in your life and you're using your vocals to the best ability you can uh, yeah, it doesn't mean you don't go through something yourself. You're struggling with your own issues, uh, as am I and, and many others. But, you know, you met someone who doesn't have the ability to speak. Um, maybe she speaks in her own ways, whether it's sign language or something. But she cannot physically speak where you can. doesn't mean you don't struggle. You have your own issues. But you're using it to your best ability to then you can even speak for her and, and people like her who don't have the That's ability. And we... That's another thing that we have as a, as a person with a disability. We, we tend to meet all these others along our journey who are like us, but, in, in, you know, their parts are different. You know, our, my eyes, your eyes are better than mine. But you can come across somebody with an eye issue and go, wow, like, he, he can't see, but that doesn't mean I won't help him guide him across the street or, or whatever. You know, my eyes are okay. I can get across the street. But there are some people who, you know, struggle with that. So you met this woman in your journey mm-hmm. who can speak, and now – you can speak for her, whether she wants you to or not. You can be a voice for those who don't have one, physically or not. That's funny because someone is, someone said that I was in one of my earlier videos. Someone said that I uh, he felt that because he had a child that was autistic or something, I think. Um, and he told me in the comment section, he said he felt what he felt like I was speaking to his child, and I've never ever had anyone tell me that. Yeah. Which made me feel really good because I wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying to do that, but I was just trying to speak for, just speak in general, because I feel like our, the population, unfortunately, our community is not really spoken for, unfortunately. We don't, I mean, though our voices are, we speak, but they're not, I feel like they're not loud enough, and I don't know how to get them to that point, because I feel like even though we speak, it's almost like we're silent at the same time. Yeah. Which makes me sad. Yeah, but the goal is to, like, like it's for me, I do this so that the next group of people that try it don't have to work as hard to do it. I have to scream and I have to constantly, you know, annoy people to get their attention. It's like, hey, I'm not going to give up. You may think I will, but you're not going to break me. But hopefully the next, you know, generation or the next group of us that are getting into, whether it's podcasting, YouTubing, or any other type of field of entertainment or anything, hopefully it's pretty simultaneous. You just get into it. It's pretty effortless. And, you know, people will listen to them just because the ones that laid the the ground for, for you and I and the ones before them, now we have impacted the next group of people so that it's just easier. And then after them, maybe it's easier for those. And Hopefully the disabled group is the disabled community is just not a silent group, but you know, we have to get to a place where enough of us speak um, because we're very easy to separate and just say, Hey, well, you guys aren't the same because one of the things I've discovered over the months or the years of doing this, you know, we have a community and, and we're all bunched into this one group and our logo is this guy. Bullet, stop. Sorry, my cat's chewing on my thing. Um, but we, we're bunched into this group 
where our logo is a guy in a wheelchair and you and I aren't in wheelchairs, but we're still, we're still included into this group. And I feel like, you know, we need to one, change the logo. I'm not saying to what, I have no idea. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> not that smart to come up with it, but you know, we want to be inclusive and we're just kind of, yeah, that's true. We, we don't we kind of just like we, we float as a community we don't really know because a lot of us are, are you know you I've, I've seen you go through it I've gone through it a lot of us are shameful of what we are you know you see people that are proud to yeah. be women or whatever their color is or their gender or different things but you don't see a whole lot I mean we have disability pride month but it's still not a, it doesn't seem like it's a real thing for a lot of us because so many of us are are hateful or shameful of of who we are because that's how the world tends to make us feel. Um, We feel broken. I think we're considered the broken people and it's not necessarily true. Um, But we, we don't know how to come together. We, we find it's very easy to to just segregate us and make us feel like um, we don't belong in the world or um, it's easy to just kind of, take one group of us and say, Hey, you're the eye people. You're the ear people. You're this, you're not the same. Like you, cause I I mean, I've heard it, especially in the deaf community where a lot of people in the deaf community will say, well, we're not disabled. We just speak a different language. And it's like, that sounds cool, but you are disabled. However you want to look at it, you're, you're still a part of us and we have to stop doing that. We have to just keep speaking up and, and coming together. We don't have to come together all the time. But at certain moments of the year, it's kind of like how people do breast cancer awareness walks and things like that. If we can just come together every couple months or every so often during the year and stand together and say, hey, we're we're a community um, and we're strong, it it, it makes people take notice. Well, for me, I mean, I just feel like we should always be together, even though people probably say, well, that's insane, but. I mean, because we like there's not many of us, so I think we should always be band together. We may not always agree with each other's opinions, but because there's like only supposedly only twenty five percent of the population is disabled, which shows that's not much of the population. So why be separated when there's not many of us already? Like I understand what you're saying about coming together at certain points of the month, but if you don't do it throughout the year why would we want why would people want to come together at certain times so well i say we we have to start one we have to start somewhere but also a lot of us really are still we have to deal with our own issues and sometimes you have to focus on your main issue at at the at the point like maybe you have to deal with rights for people who are blind or deaf or, or paraplegics whatever but i mean you're always together in spirit you're always together when needed but i don't sometimes you know if you think about it, like you have friends, you have family, you have a lot of people in your life and there are people that need you at times when you necessarily can't be there for them because you have your own life and you can't. Oh, I understand. Yeah. So like we can't, we, as a community, we can't constantly be together because we all have our own shit to deal with. But, <laughs> but you know, there are times when you need, you know, that's why you know who are your real friends in life. Cause you, you come when you need them, they're there. But not every time, because sometimes we all like sometimes we're going through our own mental health or we're going through our own physical ailments or mental ailments that we just can't mm-hmm. address other people's issues at the time because we don't physically have time for our own issues um, and we haven't that's come to true. terms with it. So that's what I mean. It, it, it's it's hard for us to just immediately be together all the time because we have there's there's issues that everybody's working on. There's people that are in wheelchairs that are trying to get ramps in every building. You know. I, I get what you're. I got what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I meant. More, I think I probably when I said that, I think I meant more online because a lot, of, at least a lot of the disability community that I found was a lot of people on Twitter were actually. I didn't expect that. I found a lot more. Um, like I learned a lot more than I knew about autistic and other things like ADHD. I knew about this, like, being dyslexic. So to be honest, through researching stuff about being autistic. Uh, all the different things I've learned throughout different topics I've cho- chosen or people suggested to me, I've learned a lot. And I don't know if I would have learned as much if I didn't have that online um, disability community that I have. So, And a lot of them are so like very sweet and positive and supportive 
And I'm grateful also that I have a very supportive family because if, if I don't know many people that have that. I don't know everyone does not, which sure. is very sad. Um, yeah, no, for sure. What, what gonna say? Oh, I know what I was going to say. I was going to say, um, I'm glad that I learned, I don't know if it was college or after college. I mean, I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was a of my disability because I've always known that I probably always somewhere in the back of my mind when I was little known that I was different. I've always known that. Um, but I, there was a point where I was ashamed of my disability because sometimes I would hate being feeling different but I learned throughout years and years of you know having it to not be ashamed of it. I even made, this, I even made a video about it to not be ashamed of your disability because Honestly, you can't outgrow it. You can't, or at least for me, at least, I don't know, for everyone else. But for me, I know I will never be without it. I was born with it. Yeah. I know that I, I don't want it to be cured because I didn't sleep and it makes me a better person. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. Um, I feel like it makes me view people differently because I can see how they actually are. And like one thing, one bad experience I had, this is online, being kind of upset, but I'm okay. Um, this guy, he was like, he basically kind of said he was only talking to me because I was autistic. And then, like, when he got mad, he was like, the hell with autism and like the hell with you and whatever. And I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he decided to come back with, I ain't talking to him because, it was like, if you're going to be like that, you can, you're confusing me. Like, so you're going to be like, all, you'll, you'll be all nasty and then be all nice again because I'm going to talk to you. I don't think I want to deal with that because it's so great toxic. Yeah. Um, and so, thing is, I think a lot of people, I know this probably is going to sound weird to some people, I think um, that it's important to embrace who you are fully, even if you're ready to do it. Like, you're, say your disability, just for example, like say you are autistic and everyone else thinks that's just weird or whatever. Just embrace it and you'll find the people that you're actually supposed to be friends with, you know, your people, you'll find your people. Because there's a lot of people that are very supportive and don't try to be rude and disrespectful and, you know, they just will accept you for you. They won't, like, like be, like, one of those people that just stab you down or, like, being all this stuff, like, you should, go, like, why, you got punished from God. To be honest, having a disability is not a punishment. I don't see it as a punishment. People, some, this one person said that they believe that people that have disabilities, like, they're being punished by God. That's not what is happening. In my opinion, if God wanted everyone to be the same, he would have made them all the same. Yeah, I think we all go but through moments. But that's just a Mariah thing, though. Maybe that's just a Mariah thing, though. <laughs> no, I mean, I think we've I all know. gone through our, our times where we we wonder and we, we try to figure out what is the root, like why is this happening to me? And this doesn't have to necessarily be a disability thing either. But you, you wonder, like, especially if you you know my disability happened when I was young. So, uh, yeah, I, I sat and go, like, whether God hates me or oh, whatever. Like, how, how did it all this happen? You try to get to the root of the issue. And sometimes it's right in front of your face. And a lot of times it's not what everyone likes to make it seem or whatever root of the, the, the evilness that comes into us and tells us, ah, you know, this is this is what it is. You know, our brain plays a lot of tricks on us. Um, yeah, that's true. Very, very true. Yeah. So we, we tend um, we tend to make it worse. and But we... By doing that, by saying, well, God cursed us or, or however they get to it, we tend to, that's, that's our way of trying to get to the root of the problem and trying to, to get to the source of how all this came about. Um, because we don't want to believe that some things just kind of naturally happen um, or we don't want to believe that it's for a good reason because it is so bad that we go, oh, this can't be for a good reason. But you don't really see it until you're you're clear of the, the, you know, the smog and... and and you're able to understand it and appreciate and look at the good within your situation. Cause some, some situations are really hard to really see that. It just, it just looks black. That's right. You're right. You're right. <clears throat> um, Honestly, it, like for me, I'm oh, sorry. No, you're good. You're going to go or do you want me to go? No, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So like, honestly, for me, honestly, um, since I've dealt with depression and mental health, you know, and suicidal ideation and attempts, since the age of 14, I didn't think there was going to be a way to even see, like, goodness and all of that. 
and um, now that I'm 30 and I'll be 31 in January, um, I see that I can actually get through all of that stuff. Like, there's a lot of stuff with self-work. I mean, I used to hate myself. I really, really used to hate myself. Um, but now I don't, which is really weird because it, it's funny when you see yourself one way and then you see yourself the complete opposite. You actually see value in yourself and, like, you actually... Because I used to hate how I looked, and then I look at myself, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, Mariah, you're so pretty today. Like, it's weird. It's almost like a, like, you know, when someone is, like, in a complete, it's like you're in one headspace, like a really, really bad one, and then you're, like, in a great one. It's like, I didn't ever think I could be that way, you know? So uh, the thing is, uh, and I think that might be why I take this, when like, people have mental health issues, I take them extremely seriously because of that reason. Because I've been with how many people are at, like, when they tell me, Oh, I'm going to harm myself. Oh, I'm going to kill myself. I don't take that as a, oh, this is like a game. This is what we're playing right now because people told me they're going to do that. And then it's what I do is normally after I hear them say it, I try to coax them down, like, with this work. Thank God. I've given them the National Suicide Hotline. Unfortunately, people have used that. Unfortunately, people have used suicide manipulation against me. And those people I just stopped talking to because I'm like, I'm not dealing with this because. I already have mental health issues myself, so I don't think that's fair to use something that some of these people knew that I've gone through to to use it against me because you just want think this is a game here. Yeah. <laughs> what? Like I don't get it. Like. Yeah, I mean, it, it's there are people that are really hurting, and they're 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 sending out signals and flags for you to you know hopefully check in on them and help them. Uh, and then there are people that play games with it. And, and I did a live on Facebook the other day just about kind of cleaning your bubble uh, of life where you need to have more positive, not only just anything, but positive people. And there are people that, you know, again, I have mental health. There, there's a person that's in my life currently who's a friend, but I also work with him and he's just depressed all the time and he's just frustrated all the time. And it, 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 screws with mine because it's like I've been in really good moods lately and I've been just feeling better about myself and just feeling happier and then I'm gonna get around them and it just sucks my energy out and it's like I'm trying to be as good a person as I can the older I get and I'm trying to clean my bubble of all the negative and saturated energy that's in there um and it's good to choose constantly I mean it's great to work on yourself but you also have to look at what's in your life because some things in your life that are, they're, 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 it's like it's like if you're on your phone and you have all these apps that are running around, and there's one app that's draining your battery, but you don't even know it's in the, you don't even know it's running. It's just in the background. It's not visible. And if you don't, if you don't like cancel that app, you don't delete it. It's just going to continue to drain your battery over and over and over. And for me, like that's something I've really focused on with with, with people spe- specifically. Uh, because animals, they make my life better. I love animals, but there are a lot of people that I've had in my life that are just not great for me. And I just have to discern which are the good and which are the bad people. Um, and there's not like a lot of overly bad people. It's just there are people that are just aren't the greatest and, and they're just overly negative. And it's like, it, it impacts my moods where it's like, ugh, like I was feeling good until this phone call. Um, and so it's it's good to just constantly cleanse yourself of, of negative energy. You still there? Hmm, I think we might have lost her. Uh, okay. well, well, guys, uh, stupid technology. We we lost our thing. But I, I was just I was just talking about cleansing yourself. Of, of negative energy, whether it's people or something in your life. Maybe you watch something that's bad for you. Uh, just it, it's good to clean clean your your energy your energy bubble yeah. of of just negative you know toxicity because you were talking about the internet and um, mm-hmm. and just just people that have come along with suicidal thoughts and things and, and again there are people that are really genuinely sending out a you know they're shooting up a flare saying hey I need help and then there are people that are just playing around and and you just you just can't have them in your life. Yeah, so honestly, for me, since through therapy, I don't know if I learned this through therapy or um, as I just learned as a human being, I've learned to set boundaries, um, very healthy boundaries. If I feel like something, like, for example, I feel like something is too toxic for me, I will remove myself from that 
person or an individual because uh, that's not where I want my mental health to go. If it's not, I feel like it's going to climb up health, I won't even engage with it. So I feel like it's not worth my time. And I don't mean as I'm saying it will no, add no value to my life is more what I should say. Then I won't engage. Um, I've also learned in therapy, it's not my, um, it's not my responsibility to, um, basically, for example, I have to always be true to myself. I can't make people feel a certain way for me or, or feel a certain way and I'm supposed to be responsible before their thoughts or feelings, which my therapist agrees with. Um, it's interesting because <laughs> I just remember how, when I entered therapy, how different I was than to how I am now. It's like insane. It's, the most, it's almost like not the same person. <laughs> it's kind of insane. I was honestly, when I first entered therapy, I didn't, like, my mindset was really, really bad. I was um, and then now, it's like almost like it, 180. How do you, um, like, how do you balance your mental health? Like, hmm? How do you balance your mental health like, um, currently? Like, how do I balance it? I mean, honestly, it's a, since I have anxiety issues, which is unfortunate, um, I try my best to try the techniques she tells me to do. She says, like, the ta- there's, like, you're supposed to, for one of the techniques, you're supposed to use your, you're supposed to use your two fingers, your one, one, the two next to your thumb, and tap, um, you can tap under your cheekbones, and it's supposed to do something, and it's supposed to do it with both your hands, um, and it's supposed to do something where, like, it fix, it does something to my brain, I don't know how to explain it to you. <laughs> It like helps, like especially when I'm really anxious. Is it like a, um, a pressure it point? Does to, I don't know what it is, but it does something to my mind. I see almost like it clears my mind of all the thoughts that are like circling around in there. It's really strange. Cause I didn't think it actually would work. I thought I was, just, you know, when therapists tell you things, you kind of drive them at like your own risk, and you're like, oh, is it actually going to work, or is this just, is it just the actual a fake technique, or is it actually going to work? Didn't expect it to actually work, though. Yeah. Um. It, but it clears it clears my mind of like all the what I was worrying about at the moment. So like, it was weird. It almost like it made me feel like I felt peace. It's, I don't know how to explain it. It's odd it, because when you, especially when you're anxious all the time, when you don't have peace, when you do, it's like, oh, that's what it's like. <laughs> yeah. I take this supplement called uh, ashwagandha. It's a very natural. Yeah, I started doing that too. My mom um, actually, she found that I take the gummies. It's, they're actually all really great because I didn't think they'd actually work. Okay. Huh. I take the supplement, but I, I take the extra strength. and it, it. You don't like, for me, I don't, I don't feel it in the sense where I feel like something's kicking in. It just feels like I just I just will go a couple of days and I'll go like, oh, I've been smiling and I'm not like anxious. Exactly. I'm, See, not that's good. Yeah. I know. I know how you feel because I'm like, I take it and I'm like, oh, my God, my mind is so, so much better. Like, it's not so much. My mom was like, she could tell a difference. From, uh, I got it because I can't. I don't know. My, I know how I am normally. She did it a different way because she's, you know, viewing me. So she was like, oh, I can see a difference. Yeah. Well, I yeah, because I'm like, I hope something works because we've been trying to figure out how I can, like, um, get my anxiety under control some because they're not outrageous, unfortunately. It's not much better because at my job, there's this child that's aggressive. I'm doing my best again with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, he will attack you and don't, you don't know why he's doing it. He just will go on. So my anxiety is always, like, yeah. very high for work. So I'm like, okay. And the reason my mom, my parents, and my family are like, well, I usually quit, but they, they also understand why I don't, because I know this, ch- this child, you know, has this disability, and it's not why he's doing it. That's not why he's doing it. But the thing is, because I view him as, I can't give up on this child, you know, it just I just think if I was in this situation, if there was me doing that to him, not that I would. Well, at least not purposely. But... I would think if I just left him, I'd feel bad because I'm like, I want the best for each of these children, and I can't just give up on him even though he's being violent. Because he's not always violent, but when he's really violent, it's like horrible. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> giving me permanent scars and everything, but yeah, anxiety is hopeful. is the worst for me. I the depression and the PTSD and some of the things they're not great, but the anxiety is always something I've I've 
petrified of. That's why I try so hard to take care of it because it's, it, it really is like a dark cloud that is always there and it might be there my whole life. And you feel it like you just, you get, you know, you, you, you tense up and it's just, you know, it's right above you yep. and it, it just, you're anxious. And, and that's when you start doing things that are out of, you know, things that are really not what you, your norm, I should say. Um, you start acting ridiculous. That's where the suicidal thoughts come from. And that's where you start just cause you want the, the voices to stop. You want whatever it is that's controlling yeah, you. Yeah, you want control. Yeah, you want to get control of your body and your life and your mind. And your mind just starts you know, there's times I always kind of compare it to the game um whack-a-mole where a lot of times a thought will pop up and you're able to fight it off and so you bop it down and then another thought pops up somewhere else in your brain and it just keeps coming and coming and every time you try to fight it with 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 you know intellect and knowledge and and, and uh proof it'll come up with something else to refute what you just said. And it just keeps coming and it's bouncing all over the place. And, and you're just, you're just freaking out because there's so much being thrown at you and it's usually all bad. Yep. And you keep freaking yep. out. And the anxiety is what really pushes you to the brink of destruction in a lot of ways. That's where you tend to just want to just end your life because you just, you're tired of the, the shit that's being just poured on you. It's like enough. Like, I don't want to mm-hmm. deal with this anymore. This is terrible. Um, but yeah, how, how, again, I, you know, you don't have to go deep into it, but you've talked about it on your, your, your YouTube and stuff. How far are you removed from your last suicide mm-hmm. attempt? It's been about a year since the, ma- like about over a year since my major, major uh, suicide attempt. And the reason I say major, major, because my mom was contemplating calling the ambulance, which she never, ever, ever, ever done before in any of my other ones, but that day. I had attempted it, attempted three times, and like um, the weird thing is, my mom wouldn't have suspected it because before, like she had went to go get my sister and everything, so I was fine. And then I had this like flash, like a daydream, like a uh, soul, and the daydream which scared me half to death. I got in this daydream. My ex shot me in the back of my head, and then I didn't know he. I was dying, and I didn't know he went. And I'm like, oh my gosh, if he's gonna kill me, then I'm gonna kill myself before he can do it. Not, I'm glad that didn't work or everything, and I'm glad that I'm in a better mental state. But I was like, but I was like, then I was like, yeah, that means that means that I was like, yeah, my I said I had to get help in the problem with. The unfortunate problem about when you try to get help, I hate with that. This is one part I hate about it. They tell you to be honest, you know, and when you're calling for help and stuff. Yeah. They tell you to be honest. Then they, then when you tell them you've tried to attempt suicide, they will tell you you can't go. They can't. You have to go to the hospital and get, um, you have to go to the hospital and get, like, done a, like, evaluation done in order to get a psychiatrist. It's like, wait, so what, so you, do you want me to, or not want me to get help? Like, yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. And I'm glad, like, I found, because I was, like, searching, like, I was like, Mariah, you need to get help. Cause, and the funny thing is I I never actually told myself that I needed to get help before. Um, I just kind of dealt with my issues but in a way I knew how, but just, but I knew, like, just ignoring them. But yeah. I was like, Mariah, yeah, this is wor- the worst attempt you've ever done. Uh, you need to get help. Uh, I mean, my, I even had the uh, that day, I think I had, like, um, I called my best friend on um, Facebook Messenger or on the phone or whatever, and I was like, I don't want to tell them what I was doing because I was terrified. I knew how they would react. I felt poor Bob and told them my room was mad, which I understand, I get it, because I am their child. I'm my sister's, I'm, I have two sisters, I'm their sibling, and my parents, I know they were upset from their child. And honestly, at that point, I was like, this is just like, I had enough of this. Not not with them. And just in general, I just had enough with the situation that was happening. So I was like, I, don't, I was like, I don't know what got me to stop trying, attempting, but I'm glad I did stop. Um, and the reason I know that it was a major suicide attempt, because it actually, I think I have, I think I actually might have scarred my, what, I don't know, the bone, the hyoid bone, I think. Because every time I wear, um, uh, college shirts really up to my neck. I can feel like it feels like I'm choking it, you know? Yeah. That makes any sense. Sorry if I'm up to say the method, but um, 
but that's what it feels like. So I try when I do wear shorts or the collars, I make sure it's not always buttoned up to the top, so I don't feel like I'm being choked. Yeah, it sounds like your gets a reminder. Sounds like your mom is probably your biggest supporter, then, huh? Both. Well, to be honest, both my parents are. My my dad, like when I was in actually college, when um. He actually was one of, he stopped one of my suits I had done. But then at the time I was pissed that he did that, but I'm glad he did. <laughs> yeah. That's... And it's horrible I say that, 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 that I was pissed that he did that, but it's the truth. I guess that's how some people must feel when that happens. Yeah. When they just want to end it, but then they can't. But I'm glad I didn't because I wouldn't be able to talk to people. I wouldn't be able to work with people I am, the kids I am. I wouldn't be able to help people I am, you know, a, a lot of things. I was devastated, and the reason the reason I stopped ever stopped doing suicide attempts is because of the experience that I had with this person online. And I'm glad I had it, even though I didn't like the suicide manipulation. It showed me what my family and people that I cared about would experience if I end up completing suicide. So I had this experience back maybe two years ago in December, about okay, about two years ago. Where this guy was a uh, no whole situation, that's on the point. The point is he was saying he was going to kill himself and all that stuff because I wouldn't do something for him, but that's beyond the point. The point after that, I said, I'm not, I got him, I got him not to do it, yeah. Then it was like, and I stopped talking to him for like five days, and then I waited to get to this message, and he was like, like basically he said he was going to kill himself, and he actually like sent me the picture, like, of like, the pills in his hand and everything. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like freaking out because I woke up to his message. I'm like, oh my gosh, that was like five hours ago. And I was like, I kept trying to message and see if he's okay. And so, okay, later on I found out he was okay. That was like the most scariest like, situation I went through in my life. And I'm like, is this, this is how I'm going to make my family feel. I was like, yeah, I can't do this. Like, I can't do that to them. And like that alone impacted me. You know, Mariah, you gotta, you can't be doing that. Like, you can't be trying to harm yourself in the point where you will kill yourself. Yeah, you have a like, reason you to can't live. Do that. If it's not yeah, just yourself, that's it's it. For them. And that's one thing I told them. I said, I said, I told my family, I said, I'm never gonna ever try doing that. And I told, I told my husband, I said, I'm never going to do that to you. Like, I'm not. Like, that's not fair to you guys. I would feel horrible. Yeah. Even though, I mean, of course, I'd be dead. But that's, you know what I'm saying? I'd feel terrible about the impact that I would have caught. So, so that that could also cause mental health issues for them. Now I think about it. Yeah. Well, an unconditional love by both parents is very rare. Most people don't have that, I don't think. and it's That's very true. You're right. They don't. It's good that you have it. Um, <clears throat> uh, so... Where do you, again, I'm not going to do the corny, like, where do you see yourself in five years? But, like, what what are you kind of working on th- these days? And what, what are you, like, what are you trying to achieve down the road? Honestly, um, I'm trying to see if I can actually be, a, like, a disability advocate, like, actually, like, you know, certified in that. So far, nothing, I mean, I was trying to even look into the job for doing that stuff. Um, because that's how much I want. I mean, I know I am one that like, non, you know, certified, but I've always wanted to make a bigger impact with the disability community. Um, and honestly, probably since I've been a child, but as I've gotten older, I feel like that's just where I'm, I'm supposed to be. Like, it doesn't matter if it's politics, working with them, like just, you know, anywhere. Like even the kids I work with, I show them every day. Well, I try to. I try to support them everywhere I can. I mean, not, some days it may not be as good as others, but that's, that's, to be honest, with anything, that's how it works. But I just want, I just want each person in the disability community and outside to know that they are valuable. Because it's not, it's just, I want people to understand that it's not just, it's not, even though we're different, all everyone is, let's be honest, but all, all that anyone in the disability community needs is the support, you know, and acceptance. And I feel like that once that's, you know, taken care of, then maybe then people will view it differently. Yeah, for sure. Um, do you want to promote whatever you want to promote, your YouTube channel, 
I have one last thing before you say oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Um, I just want people to know that um, regardless of what your disability is, uh, who you are, who people think you are, just be who you, uh, just be fully yourself, even if it scares you or others. And you, just because people say you don't look like you have a disability doesn't mean you don't, and don't listen to them, because the only person who any matters about yourself is yours, your own. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. That's a good message. Um, but yeah, so you have a YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Um, my YouTube channel is just my name, Mar- Mariah Burley. Do you want me to spell it? Yeah, spell it. My name is spelled M-A-R-I-A-H, and my last name is spelled B-U-R-L-E-Y. I also actually, funny thing is, I used to do art, like I used to draw. I'm not the best drawer. That sounded weird. I mean, artist. I know, too, it's okay. <laughs> so, um, like, I've been drawing a lot more, and I've been sharing that on my Patreon, which is part of my, I use my Patreon to support my, my YouTube channel. So anyone that's on my Patreon, I take my Patreon, get to see my videos, my planned videos three days before everyone else gets to see them. And this week, um, today's video actually is about the fear of being dis- uh, being misunderstood because of my disability. That was an interesting video to do. It was, it was interesting because I was having vocal is- voice issues. I don't know why. But it shows what I think about like being misunderstood because I often am. Yeah. And I just like, like showing personal things, you know, about myself. Yeah. That's good though. I mean, I, I that's how you have to do it to me. I, just unfiltered and just show people, uh, you know, a deep insight on what it's like to go through a person with your conditions and battling mental health. And it's, you can advocate by just opening yourself up and being vulnerable to the world. And because a lot of us can't even imagine doing that, and we don't have a lot of examples or representation of us doing it, so we think we're alone but more people who are doing it even if even if you you know like i said you may say something and people may take it a different way but they're you know they may not have a disability but just because you're a woman who's powerful and and overcoming that's something that they're holding on to so you may you may help somebody that you're not even intentionally trying to help uh but just through your words and just being open and vulnerable there are people going to see that and say hey like this is I can get with this. This this is helping me one way or another. And and as a person who you know is dealing with different issues, you're gonna help. You're gonna help, uh, as you said earlier, the parents who are uh, of, of these kids who may not be able to speak. And you're also helping the people who are like you, um, because they're you know you're an example. You're an, a role model for them to see and say, hey, okay, she's like us, and and she can do it. So why can't I? Uh, So you may start a a trickle down effect for the next person to, to, you know, put their life out there. Yeah, that's very true. You never know who you impact. Yeah, you you never know. You just never know when you're going to meet somebody and, you know, all of a sudden you have similar similarities and you have conversations that just impact you and they impact them. And you you take that back to your own separate lives and you, you find your own little niche and your own little hole and you go, okay. I'm going to start mine from way over here because I interview people all the time from, uh, I mean, you're, we're both in the East coast, but I've talked to people in South Africa and, you know, Canada and, and, and all over the world. And I never thought I'd talk to anybody in South Africa unless they were like from there and they came over here. Um, you never think they can reach that many people from so far away, but a lot of us are going through something no matter where you're born and no matter what you look like. Uh, and that's why it's so ridiculous how we're constantly just being pulled in different directions and how we're constantly trying to be separatists. But we have to be together. That's only we're going to make any kind of impact. And that's not just the disability community. That's just as as pe- as people because we're going to be our own undoing if we don't. Uh, so it's good for very true. Yeah, it's good for someone like you to come out of your shell and just you know take your pain and turn it into something just beautiful. I appreciate you having me on. I mean, like, honestly, I just want, I just hope that one person at least um, understands and can relate to it. 
I'm sure they will. And even if I even if I don't know them, it doesn't that doesn't matter. Just I just want someone to be able to explain positive and possibly it helped them in their life. That's all. Yeah. Well, a guest once told me one time when I was kind of feeling down about uh, you know, how many people were listening or not even just listening, but commenting and, and, and liking and whatever. And she said to me, like, just because people aren't interacting and aren't, aren't get, you know, engaging with the comment section or, or whatever, that doesn't mean they're not listening. Like, you never know who's listening. And sometimes you think no one's listening. And this could be on your YouTube channel. This could be in life. You could be sitting in a restaurant and someone could be looking at you and watching. Like, they know you a little bit. They know what you go through and they go, wow, like she's just powerful. And you may have impacted somebody emotionally and you didn't even know it. Uh, now I could go for the other way around too. You could be impacting someone negatively and you don't know it, but we're trying not to think that way. So, um, but yeah, like with your YouTube channel and with what, whatever you do on social media and just in life, you may, you may be impacting people. They just, they may not be saying, Hey Mariah, you help me. Now again, those help us. It's, it's always great to feel that way, but you just, yeah, it does. You're right. Yeah. But that's our ego talking, too. Sometimes we want that to boost <laughs> us to make true. us feel better. But you may be helping people as you speak, as we speak, minus this show. It's just you just don't know it because they just haven't said it to you. Uh, very true. That's very true. Um, my dad, funny thing is, when I remember when um, my channel was just like, started and stuff, my dad was like, All right, I'm glad that you're like, your, your YouTube channel and you don't ever know how many people are here inspiring i was you know i sometimes would share with my family like comments they get and how they make me feel especially when you don't know you're doing that to somebody you're not like because you're not really trying to like make people and in, in, like inspire people in that way you're just kind of being yourself so i'm like i'm glad i said dad i'm so glad you said that to me because you don't know how much mom you know you need to encourage it yourself so like thanks for doing that for me yeah that's why it's it's great that you have them and they are constantly in your corner because you need that because you know when you're dealing with your depression, you get backed into a lot of corners and it's the whole fight or flight. You, you either stay and fight or you just fly away. And a lot of times we tend to just, we run because we, we don't know what mm -hmm. else to do because it's scary. But when you have someone else in your corner with you, maybe you're backed in a corner with your parents now life isn't so scary. Now the demons aren't as big as that we initially projected them to be um, because you're not alone yeah. anymore. When you're alone, everything mm -hmm. seems scary. Throw a random person in the it woods does. and you hear a wolf make a sound or you, you can hear something that's maybe maybe a, a loud bird that's not even that big. But to you, it's so you know foreign. That it's like, oh, my God, what was that? And it was so quick. And yeah, but when you have somebody next to you, Maybe somebody who has been through a little more. Your parents are obviously older than you. They've had experience in life. Maybe not exactly what you're going through, but they've seen a lot of other things in life that you haven't experienced yet. And they have the knowledge and they're there to just support you and, and giving you that unconditional love. So obviously thank them for me for being such great parents because you, you needed them. I do. Mm -hmm. And you always I will need them. them. I'm grateful for that. <laughs> so them I'm very grateful for them, like, helping me do all this stuff and like you know being there and because not i don't know so i know there are some people that don't have that that i feel horrible for and i hope that i'm able to i mean of course i can't accept like the parents but i try my best to be as supportive as i possibly can yeah um so no and keep doing it yeah. you're doing a great job um i really thank you for coming on the show uh if you ever need a friend or someone to talk to you can always text me or, you know, we could talk on the phone. Uh, we all need it. And so if you're ever feeling down about whatever, I'll, uh, sure. I'll listen. And, uh, no. yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, you have anything, any kind of final words before we go? No, just be, all I gotta say is just be yourself. Don't, and don't let anyone make you feel ashamed of being yourself because you are perfectly, perfectly fine being yourself and just be yourself. Yeah, good enough for me. All right, sweetie. Well, we'll talk soon, and I'll let you know when this is all put together and everything. Um, okay. But thank you again for coming on. You're welcome. And uh, we'll talk soon, okay? Talk. Okay. Bye. Bye. Ah, what a sweetie. Um, sorry for the technical difficulties. I know there was a little feedback there. I don't know if it'll come out when I when when I run it through the the app. 
um, I will say towards the end there, to the middle to the back end, um, you may have heard my door open. There was like a little squeak. My, uh, what do you call it? The screen door opened. And anytime Bullet hears any door open when he knows I'm not, I'm not, I'm already in here, he'll freak out. And he was on his, uh, his cat, uh, throne, his little cat tree. He heard the door open and he just, boom. So you heard a little, you heard probably a little squeak from the door. And then you heard, boom, which is him jumping off and then darting into the bedroom. <laughs> so there was that. I like to just give you guys understanding of what, what's all going on. He was also on the couch here purring and knocking shit over and chewing on stuff. He's just a delightful fella. Um, but yes, back to Mariah. What a great guest. I'm, I'm so happy to have her on. I didn't know how it was going to turn out because we hadn't really had a previous like uh, interview or anything just to get to know her. Um, any kind of initial contact, just a little bit of texting and stuff. But what a sweet woman. I'm, I'm so happy she exists and that she is finding her own voice. Uh, it's really great to see. Um, so I thank you guys for coming on. I appreciate the time, uh, that you take out just to hear my, uh, my silly voice. See, I'm being positive because I was going to say my stupid voice, my silly voice. So I'm trying to be some sort of guiding light for somebody out there. So, uh, everybody stay strong and, um, I will see you on the next one. Oh, I will say another thing, another little quick little disclaimer here at the end is if the thing is a little louder, you may have to turn it down. I apologize, but her phone was like really low. So I might have the mic and, and then the board up a little louder than normal. Um, I'm trying not to be too close to the mic. So hopefully everything came out okay. You know, we'll, we'll manage and figure it out. But technical difficulties, guys, no matter how expensive your equipment is, no matter if you have the top of the line shit, something will always go wrong. Uh, so, yeah, I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks again for support and uh, take care, guys. Boy. <laughs>